Hello, this is Public Advocate, and I'm Shirley Graves. This month, we have a wonderful local organization, the Italian Street Painting Marin, which I'm sure everybody at one time has seen the Italian street painting going on in downtown San Rafael, and there's been some changes in the group, and we're going to hear all about the history of it and the plans for this year. And my guests here are Sue Carla Magno, who is the founder of the Italian Street Painting Marin organization. To my left is Arnold Shimizu. Uh, he is an illustrator and graphic designer. He performs and teaches uh, Japanese percussion, and he's part of the group. Uh, to his left is Sarah Mordecai, who is an icon designer and illustrator. Uh, there's a lot of artwork going on on that street. <laughs> and on um, her left is um, Joel Yao, a still life and landscape painter, sculptor, and a professional graphic artist and illustrator. And all of these people work together uh, along with a lot of others and get them all organized to put on this wonderful, wonderful scenery, <laughs> in addition to the scenery of downtown San Rafael. Um, Let's see, how shall we get started on here? Oh, you want me to tell a little I, bit I about... I think, why don't you tell a little history of your group? Okay, so. well, Town Street Painting Marin was formed in 2013. And it came about because of the fact that Youth and Arts Italian Street Painting Festival, which ran for over 17 years, um, stopped in 2010 uh, due to some financial difficulties. So the public just really got behind wanting to bring the event back. I'll go into a little more about how that happened in a minute, but to give you a, an idea of what our mission is as an organization, mm -hmm. um, we showcase the fine art of street painting yeah. and we support quality arts projects mm -hmm. in the community. So that's our purpose and our goal. Uh, we are also a program of Every Life Foundation for Rare Diseases, and that's a national organization here in the county, in Marin County. It's dedicated to accelerating biotech innovation for rare disease treatments through uh, science-driven public policy. The foundation also really believes in bridging, the si bridging science and the arts to enhance health, inspire hope, and change lives. So we're extremely fortunate to have been able to get involved and be part of uh, Every Life Foundation. Oh, wow. And you wanted to know a little bit more about <laughs> how we got started? Yes, um, yes, cause, and we definitely want to, to uh, get it on the calendar here when your next event is. So we Well, definitely <laughs> we'll do that right now okay. and later and later again. And later again, <laughs> okay. Uh, the <laughs> next event in downtown San Rafael is June 27th and 28th. Mm -hmm. And, of course, our th guest artists here will be part of the event. Um, to give you a little, little background of how uh, Italian Street Painting Marin started, um, I was fortunate enough, uh, along with my husband, to be the founder of the original Youth and Arts Italian Street Painting Festival. And that happened, we had our first event in uh, 1994. Um, I actually retired from that event in 2007, <laughs> and then it continued on till 2010, as I mentioned before. So the community reached out and asked us if we'd step back in, and basically what we did was, uh, we didn't have a name, we didn't have an address, we didn't have a phone number, we didn't have a nickel, we didn't have anything, and we pulled together people like our guests and lots of other people in the community and Every Life Foundation who were big supporters and began the process of um, reinventing the street painting event. Wow. So that's basically how it got started. And I wanted to show you an image. This was created by Sarah um, in, I'm not sure what year, during the youth and arts era. And it is um, the sleeping lady. And of course, we thought this would be a perfect image for our first poster. And we kind of went with the tagline, "Sleeping the sleeping lady awakens, to just indicate that street painting has returned. Uh -huh. And um, so once we got that going, we, um, you know, we continued on with the event uh, 
in 2014, and then of course this year, uh, June 27th and 28th. Uh -huh. um, and there's a theme this year, and um, this will give you a little idea of the image that Joel created. Joel, do you want to talk a little bit about your painting that you created that, to use for our media? Sure. Um, <laughs> Sue and Joe wanted, we, we, we met about it and thought what would be a good theme and carrying over the Italian, because this is after all the Italian street painting, uh, decided, well, let's go back to Italy and, and do, in this case, uh, okay. Carnaval di Venezia, which is a carnival in Venice. And uh, that is inspired by uh, a mask, obviously as a festive um, event, and uh, and we figured that would that would be a great image to use for for our, uh, or they thought would be a great image to use for our um, uh, materials to advertise this street painting we're in. So um, it, it is Venice, and so we look forward to having a lot more mask theme artwork at the festival. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks. Um, May as well talk about a couple of the new things this year, if that's okay sure. with you. Um, we'll have our traditional feature, which is the art on the street, oh, and geez. it's it's done by amazing artists and using chalk as the medium. But this year we're going to have a couple extra things. We're having the parade of costumes, which we're going to have about oh a half dozen or so um, people dressed in the full carnival. Uh, masks and costumes. Mm -hmm. That'll be crossing over a Venetian bridge that is yet That's to be constructed. Oh, um, and that'll happen periodically during the event. Um, we also, Joel's very much a part of this, um, the Gallery of Masks. You want to talk a little bit about uh, that and Joy Phoenix's participation uh, Joy, with that? Joy and Phoenix and I are sort of are spearheading the uh, solicitation, I should say, for, <laughs> for uh, participation at this year's additional um, gallery of masks, uh, which is going to be inspired by, again, the uh, Venetian masks. Uh, we are going to have kids, teenagers, and adults, and about six, a little over about 60 pieces will be displayed. Uh, we are holding a competition, and it will be, I think it's, gonna, it's commenced already, and we were, we're waiting for the winners sometime in April, so we can have um, a nice set of uh, Interesting mask again, inspired by the street painting festival in uh, festival in Venice, uh, to be an additional facet to this festival, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. Oh you no! Know? And the children are uh, people. People are making masks yeah. right now for a contest. Yes, exactly. and they're going to be wearing them. No, it will be displayed. Oh, uh, displayed on a wall, okay. like a gallery. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and also part of the gallery, we are going to have an exhibition of. Um, the winners of the Rare Artists Program, which is a program from Every Life Foundation, and that program is uh, an annual competition where anyone affected by uh, rare diseases, whether personally or with a family member or friend, does artwork, submits it, and then the public votes on it in Facebook, and um, then we'll be since it's people from all over the world, mostly the United States, that enter this, we won't have the original art, but we will have photographs in large poster format to display along with the mask. So that'll be another little you know, different know that. thing. That's exciting. Now, when yeah. you talk about selfie opportunities, am I getting in there somewhere? <laughs> we get to wear the masks and... <laughs> well, yes, actually we are. We will have some masks for people to actually do that. And um, we're in the process of trying to develop a few you know, fun, different kinds of selfie opportunities where people will have a chance to incorporate themselves within the context of something related to uh, the Venetian Carnival. So, oh since it's not yet finalized, I'm not going to go into any more okay. detail. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just watch for further announcements. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. And this is right on 4th Street in San Rafael, where it's always been. It's uh, on 5th Avenue Fifth, and A Street. 5th yeah. and A, yeah. Right, on, a. right yeah. a block, yeah. right around the corner from 4th. Yes. Um, one of the other things that we're going to be continuing with that I wanted to mention to everybody is the Children's Avenue. 
that's always been mm -hmm. popular and that's where we're going to have a lot of extra masks there for the little ones oh. to, to wear while they're painting so i think that's going to be a fun spot um, this is a, one of the note cards from the youth and arts era of a child working in Children's Avenue. Oh, yes. And the thing about this area, it's just so fascinating. Oh. The kids, as we all know, just have natural talent mm -hmm. and they just do such amazing pieces. But they also are involved with artists, too. Um, you know, various artists over the time have actually. Um, had kids who were visiting the festival or family that in, you know, came in and worked with them and Sarah is a perfect example of that. Um, she has a painting that she did a few years back that um, we are going to be showing here mm -hmm. and it's with one of your nieces. Right, the oldest niece. Um, I have two nieces who join me every year. They are my assistants. <laughs> and it started when they were very young and they would just hand me chalk. I would, they would take my chalk and then hand me a new chalk. So they were just, you know, exchanging things with me. And as they got a little older, they would color in a section. Oh. Now they're a little bit more vocal and they will tell me <laughs> that they get to do this section, but they're very helpful and they, they really look forward to it every year. And now I have two nieces that join me each year. Um, <laughs> one is 11 and one is eight, and the 11 year old has done it since she was six months old when she started <gasps> handing me chalk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and I miss them when they're not there. I, I, I've done some uh, chalk murals now and again where it's not in San Rafael where they live. And um, I, miss, I miss their help. They, they really do contribute quite a bit now. Plus, it's fun to share that project with them. And how old are they now? 11 and 8. And they'll have their own square one of these I years, keep telling right? them no, that. Right. Isn't <laughs> time for you to do your own? But um, I think I really close. miss them. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah they're very good. Oh, oh. That's, that's, that's really great. Oh, and, of my. course, we'll still have our entertainment, too, throughout the event. Um, and everything from, you know, Heavy duty rock and roll like Moon Alice to great jazz and uh, just everything in between. So I think the music is coming together nicely. So I'm excited about that. And of course, the Italian food. We're going to be cooking again on site. So mm -hmm. that'll be fun to, you know, get the pizza ovens rolling and the oh, barbecues nice. going and so on. So and and a uh, little, little uh, wine or? Uh... Oh, of course. <laughs> little, That's Italian. Little wine. That's Italian. <laughs> Definitely. Um, I wanted to kind of turn the stage over for a few <laughs> minutes to these three and tell us about, you know, how you got involved mm -hmm. with the event. Uh, I think it's a fun story yes. and a little bit of how how it impacted their careers. What do you think, Cheryl? I definitely think that we should uh, hear from each of you. We should start over here because oh. it's 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 it did start over here. Oh, this is, okay. <laughs> this is how we Actually, all got involved. I defer to, to Arnold because Arnold really uh, was instrumental in, in, uh. in introducing me to the festival and then we move on to that. Perhaps Arnold will, will share that with us. That was back in 94. Ah, uh, okay. The, the very first year of Youth and Arts Festival. Um, I was working for a graphic design firm in Mill Valley, and my boss, Dan Gilbert, at the time saw the advertisements and said, this would be a great thing for the group to do, for the whole studio to come out and participate in. So he sponsored a square and had us come out, and then Joel came out to... to when did you start? A couple of years couple after. Years. I think, so uh, we had done it a yeah. few years um, prior to Joel starting, um, I think mm -hmm. a few of us from the group, from the studio, decided to take on our own spaces. Okay, oh, see now I had forgotten that that, it, that you started off initially doing the, the, the Dan Gilbert Square and then you went off independently. Mm -hmm. Okay, well this is good. <laughs> yeah, actually I think I left, I left Dan's in 95, so we, I wanted to continue. It was so much fun to work on the street and talk to people while you're working and work together with your friends and new friends that we met oh, at the yeah. festival. And then, so Joel and I partnered up for several years. I, 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 we, Arne and I went to school, actually the three of us went to school together at the academy. And at that point I said, well, you know, I don't know if I want to do my own square, so why don't we partner? And so we partnered for a good number of years, mm -hmm. I'd say over 10 years um, since then. and. Uh, and uh, we're doing different things now, so we've sort of parted, but 
anytime we can collaborate, obviously it's it's always fun to do that. Uh, we've done any any and all classical pieces to Japanese prints to um, illustrations um, as a copy of and. Uh, it's interesting the dynamic because we uh, have different styles, but when you're on the square, you, something just sort of happens, and mm -hmm. and I don't need to look at what he's doing, and he doesn't need to. <laughs> it, it just it just happens. Just works. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we have our, kind our of a, a unique good. partnership. I think. Yeah. We don't tend to argue and fight each other too much. We, <laughs> and the styles really work well together. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like two people worked on it. If right. you're collaborating, mm -hmm. it, it really does integrate well. Well, and then I ran into Joel at an academy function. I think I was teaching there, and you came, and you know, we caught up, and he told me about chalk muraling, and I had never heard of it. <laughs> and then I couldn't believe that it was right here in San Rafael, and I lived in San Francisco, and I didn't know anything about it, so I felt like I'd missed out on all these wonderful years. So he talked me into doing it, and of course I was terrified the first year I did it to the thought of doing a six-foot mural. I was like, I cannot do it. That's mm -hmm. huge. You know, and all these years later, we're doing 16 feet, and it's, you know, I laugh now at the, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> being so frustrated with that. But um, it only took that first year, mm -hmm. and then I was also hooked. So that's why I said it started over here. But for me, it did, but I didn't mm -hmm. realize that really we have R in the bank. So. Yeah, they blame me for this. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the bank has to be blamed. It goes over here. I would hate to, to, to destroy these, you know, come Monday morning and the cars start driving over them. I'd be out there saying, no, comments. no, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. But you have lots of pictures. Well, we have pictures and we will be showing more. But what, I mean, everybody, I'm sure every one of you has had comments from the public related to mm -hmm. that. How do you answer that? What do you? What are well, your? Comments? Yeah, we've all heard that. Yeah. You know, can you chisel the chalk away, or can you take the yeah. pavement with you, or <laughs> can you seal it somehow? I want to take this and mount it in my house. Yeah. You can't. You just put down a big long canvas or something all down the street that everybody just cut through. You know, no, <laughs> we could actually. That would be similar to uh, some of the projects you've done on a, on a mural scale mm -hmm. where pieces are cut out mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. taken home. Yeah. Oh, I right, tend to tell yeah. people it's like you know it's. The artwork is like creating a life, and the life has its lifespan. So the creation of it is for the enjoyment of the audience, and then once it's washed away, that's, you know. Yeah, and what I tell people often is it's um, like watching a theater production. Mm -hmm. You enjoy it. Um, there will be yeah. potential filming of or photographs mm -hmm. of it. And you have that memory, mm -hmm. and it's it's very much a performance. Yeah. So. That's true. That's true. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think it's freeing, actually, yeah. as an artist, to know that it's not going to live on forever. It allows me to push myself a little bit further than maybe I'm comfortable, mm -hmm. whether it's in size or trying a new style, because oh, wow. I know it's not going to be around forever if it doesn't go as planned. <laughs> but knowing that freedom is in place, it actually... You, you produce better work mm -hmm. because you pushed yourself to try something new and experiment and because we have a lot of experience it, it actually ends up a better piece. Mm. I wanted to ask you guys a question if I may Shirley. Um, the you know Youth and Arts got this event started obviously and um, it ran for that 17 year period and during that period the impact um, that I think the event had on the world of street painting was pretty tremendous. Um, Address some of that in your own personal, you know, experiences. I mean, I'll address it myself, but mm -hmm. I'd love to hear some of your things because I think about like going to Italy, which we can talk about. But how did I mean you've Joel traveled all over the place and seen what's going on around the world, and um, I, 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 I just find it fascinating. I, the fact that we're the second oldest in the U.S. means a lot, and that whenever I go anywhere. It's, it's a nice talking point, uh, Santa Barbara being the first, we're the second oldest, and then I've, I've been participating at the third oldest, which is in, in, in Florida. Um, it, it's just, it just really nicely grounds uh, me uh, and, and gives us this, this um, sort of uh, leveraging the fact that we've done it for X amount of years. Yeah. Um, it, it also kind of grandfathers the fact that, oh, look, uh, it is existing, this, this festival does exist in the U.S., and 
and and it has some network and legs mm -hmm. that obviously it has. So everybody who's come to any of the festivals I've been to are always fascinated and they want to do one for their city. Yeah. And um, Sue and Joe has always been a touch point for that whenever somebody comes here or anybody who looks at, uh, at these festivals online, they go, oh, well, let's go to Sue and Joe and find out how we can build one or how we can make one in our city. Um, and I, it's really grown um, internationally and domestically. I, mean, there's, I don't know how many, uh, clearly in the hundreds <laughs> now. <laughs> really? across the US. Well, well, I such think a good that reputation. one of the things that I just think is so fascinating is we took a team, um, my husband and I were vacationing in, in Italy and we were near where the original street painting festival in Italy um, took place. So we just took the chance to see if we could find somebody to talk to and um, learn a little bit about it. And of course, we don't speak Italian, so we figured this is going to be a challenge. But we managed within a 12-hour period to make that happen with the help of some people at the hotel and so on. And um, the following year, Kathy Corey from the Santa Barbara event and I went to Italy to talk to this group officially. And during that um, conversation, we came up with a plan to bring a team of American artists there. Uh, there have been a few American artists that had participated over the years, but never a, a team. Mm. And so we were able to bring this team together and oh. go over there for their 1999 event. And Although the street painting events were only started in Italy in 1973, historically it's been going on for, for centuries. Mm -hmm. But that particular event, um, street painting was just a little component of. They wanted to kind of, it was a 600 year old event in celebration of the church and the fact that that area was known as a healing spot. And once a year people would go there and hope to be cured from whatever illnesses mm -hmm. they had and uh, started off with nothing, then they built a little chapel, and then after the, um, the plague, the Gonzaga family in uh, Montava said they'll build a church. So they built this church, and we were there for the 600th anniversary oh, yeah. of the building of that church, and it couldn't have been a better year. And um, so it was that, that was the first time the Americans really started to have, you know, uh, participate in the European oh, uh, wow. events. And the festival is a 24-hour competition. It's, it's very different. And Sarah then, uh, not that first year, but the next year. the next year, I think, that we went, was part of the American team. <laughs> and tell us yeah. a little bit about your personal experience. Oh, well, I, w I was very honored. It was my understanding that you sort of had to have an invitation and that Sue and Joe asked me if I wanted to participate made me just feel so good and I you know to go somewhere else and go to Italy where this art form began to create wow. one of my pieces oh. and I always create an original piece um, I, I was just giddy uh, but it was a very different experience I mean it's it's packed there's a, another festival going on at the same time so there's like I don't know, 100,000 people milling around, all speaking yeah, Italian, yes. and then you have the festival that's 24 hours straight, so <laughs> you start maybe, at, I, I, if I get it wrong, but it's something like you start at 3 p.m. and then you end at 3 p.m. the oh next day, <laughs> you're working at night with your headlamp or candles, <gasps> and um, you know, it, it's exotic and fun, and the, oh. the quality of work is amazing, um, very supportive community, they're like rock stars over there, so it, w it was really fun. Oh my! Yeah, the whole the whole development of street painting, just generally as an art form, has been fascinating. I mean, it started in the 16th century, and it was yeah. really just um, a, a few people using river rocks, creating images, usually of the Madonna, in front of churches and piazzas, uh, and people would throw coins on the um, on the art yes. in tribute to the quality of the art, the the subject matter. And it was their way of, of uh, oh making a living. Yeah. And then with the uh, Incontro Nazionale de Madinari, which Sarah was just talking about, that started in 73, it really started to kickstart the whole art form. And then as these events started with the first American event in Santa Barbara and oh then our event, oh. um, the art form has just 
taken off, and uh, it, it's just fascinating. It's truly an art form now. It never, we wouldn't have called it an art form 20 years ago, but it is truly an art form now. And um, I just, uh, the, the, the popularity is just amazing. It's just amazing. And you me. brought this back to Marin. Yes, well, yeah. we, we got it started here originally, uh, and it was based on the festival in Santa Barbara. And um, we just did our version, Northern California version. In fact, we passed the chalks from Southern California to Northern California, from mission to mission. That was kind of a fun thing. Um, and then um, we kind of all you know, worked together for many years, just each sharing each other's artists, uh, not only Santa Barbara and San Rafael, but around the country. You know, artists would start coming in from other places. Mm. Um, but I, I guess, you know, my, one of my fondest memories of this whole experience was when we recreated the Sistine Chapel ceiling on the street. That was an anniversary year. Mm -hmm. That was our 10th anniversary year. And yeah. where did you do that? Here? We did it right on A Street, A Street. in downtown oh. San Rafael. <laughs> and um, oh. there's a, the, we'll be showing you a picture of this. And it is uh, it was spectacular. The that artwork, was a well, huge piece. Two, yeah, how two was of it? these three here, Arnold and Joel, both participated in that particular uh, painting. Um, oh talk about it a little bit. Oh my. <laughs> Some of the, remember how large it was. How, what images did you big. do? Each artist um, took um, one of the twelve main images in in uh, Michelangelo's painting. I, I had. Do you remember? I had one of the Sibyls. Okay. Okay. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yes. One of the far corner. I forget which one it was. I know. In fact, uh, some. I think it was that same year. A bunch of us went back to the uh -huh. street painting festival in Italy, and oh. Jenna was in the Sistine oh. Chapel and said, well, there's Arnold's piece. How many artists were working on the whole piece? It well, was there, were, um, there were 12 that did the actual um, panels, mm -hmm. but then there were another 15, 20 or more that mm -hmm. did all the architectural the elements yeah. and uh, the decorative pieces all team, around yeah. it and the borders and so on. So it was a massive. Uh -huh. It was the first or one of the very first large cooperative pieces that was ever done in the world. Oh. There had been one yeah. or uh, one or two possibly in Italy, one um, at, at the Festival Grounds in Grazie, and that was when the Pope came to visit and they did a big tribute piece mm. for him. Oh, but my. other than that, we were right there at the very early stages oh, of my. doing these huge, huge paintings. And, and it so looked that's like why one piece. Pardon? It didn't look like separate artists. I no, no, it, it looked like the ceiling. Yeah, you know, Joe said it was better. <laughs> <laughs> it took up most of the street as well, didn't it? It was pretty. Yes, it, it pretty uh, wide. It was about fifty percent scale, so it took up about seventy-five feet of yeah. street in oh, length or thereabouts or eighty. Yeah. By you know the width of the street, so oh it, it was a pretty it was a pretty neat yeah. thing. It was the only time I have to say that the public. Um, you know, always said, you know, how can you get rid of this? How can you stand to see it go away? And the artists never had a problem. This time they did. <laughs> this yeah. time they did. Artists uh -huh. stayed and watched the piece be destroyed. Oh. And it was, you could see some emotion in that. That was the only time I ever noticed that. Mm -hmm. Of any, oh, no. you know, really missing what that, what, because I guess it was so many people working mm -hmm. on it together. But you have the pictures. Difference. Oh, many. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Some of the comments that we got, I think, um, I remember hearing was that they loved looking at it on the street, even people who had been to the Sistine, because they could see it better <laughs> than <laughs> having to crane their neck any, up yeah. and, oh, <laughs> and looking well, at the true. actual that's ceiling. Um, mm. Yeah, that, that, that was a special piece. Another oh. special piece um, was when the team, we took a team to Hong Kong. Okay to help create a street painting festival in Hong Kong with an arts organization there. And um, out of this group, only Joel was there. We had, we had other artists. In fact, we're showing a clip of the artists now. We had um, uh, Tracy Stum from Southern California and uh, Rod Tryon, who was or is from New York, and Jenna Panzarella, a local Mill Valley artist. And, um, uh, Tomo um, 
Saito, Saito, and he lives in Florence, Italy. And then, of course, Joel, and then Kong Nguyen from San Jose. So we had sort of a, you know, a, a team mm -hmm. that they did a lot of educational um, oh, part wow. with the kids there. It, it was really a, a neat piece. There was a large group of students that got involved with the event, and um, they each did, not each, but they worked in groups and did individual um, uh, smaller paintings, and then the team did the large painting. Mm. And the painting was, um, well, it's, do you remember, uh, tell us about the I painting. I think it was uh, uh, Neptune, uh, the theme was. Sea, uh, sea inspired. Um, yeah, um, the the woman in the shell. Right, uh, um, Venus. 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 Thank and you. A half shell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's that? Um, it was actually unique because uh, this is the first time we've actually done it on a panel that that was staged on the grounds of, of the festival site, and then at the end they took that for the first time. I, you know, we always have this. It's not going to be washed away this particular time. They actually mounted it on a board, took it inside their atrium and framed it in this gold, uh, you know, uh, wow. gilded frame for people to come after the festival to view, which was wow. kind of, for me, even a unique experience. I thought wow. it was kind of interesting. And, uh, they did a spectacular job, I have to say. Yeah. The organization and everything about that uh, experience was really special. Mm. Other than Rod was sick as a dog with horrible <laughs> flu. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, it was really, it was really um, kind of special. Mm. And, um, well, you know, the area that's so popular today, uh, Shirley, and, um, is this uh, 3D and illusionary kind of street painting. And I'm not uh, sure you're, since you're not as avid a computer user as some, <laughs> um, may not have seen some of these kinds of uh, pieces that are online a lot. But um, I want to talk about that for a minute because it's such a huge uh, popular item right now and we did actually introduce that with um, uh, oh, early on um, with an artist by the name of Elise McConnell who died very young unfortunately and um, but she was doing some amazing work and we have a, a I have a little postcard but you'll see this um, uh, close up in a second but this piece was one of the very first illusionary pieces that we, you know, had mm -hmm. at our event. And then uh, la or in 2013, we incorporated a piece that had to do with uh, flying gondolas by an artist, Tracy uh, Lee Stum from um, San or, um, Southern, Cal Southern yeah. California. Mm -hmm. And um, but. There are so many of these 3D images going on all over the world. Uh, talk about those of you that know some. I know uh, Joel has been to events that has uh, that have done some amazing 3D images. The, the 3D image, I think, it was is the grandfather, which was we call him, is uh, Kurt uh, Kurt Pinner uh, from uh, uh, he's from the U.S. and he's the first person who actually did street painting, I believe, in in Italy where you folks went to mm -hmm. and ha and has really kind of started that there the 3D uh, anamorphic uh, uh, style of illustrating illustrating uh, street painting but it's it's gone it's been so popular now that in fact a few international festival just does 3, 3D uh, they mm -hmm. bring in people who just that's all they do 3D mm -hmm. um, yeah, in fact it was just a few weeks ago in yeah. India yeah. Yeah. It's, it's actually been doing in, in Dubai um, as part of their arts program they do different kinds of mm -hmm. interesting art from murals to and so they brought in uh, I don't know about a dozen uh, international artists doing the 3D thing and they, this is something that people actually think you draw but actually they do paint they do paint with wet media and because people need to step on them after to okay. engage with them so for instance you're looking at you're looking down at something you can actually sit on that space and, mm -hmm. and then you take a picture of it to get the illusion that you're Perfect in that selfies. space <laughs> so, <laughs> so really using that's vertical surfaces too now. yeah yes. now they have the the, the, mm -hmm. the combination that they call, of, yeah, yeah. Uh, it really is part of, of engaging people to be part of the piece as you take the picture and, and it's often it doesn't look as 
convincingly uh, effective when you're looking at the piece unless you're looking through a lens. Um, and often they will have a lens in front of the mm -hmm. piece or you take it with your camera and then you take it home and you go see the illusion in its right form. Yeah, that's the one challenge of having 3D at festivals because uh, so often you need such huge amounts of physical space wow. to create they these images mm -hmm. because they're elongated and stretched out. So for our event, for example, we don't have the same kind of physical space as some other areas do. So we have never done um, you know, a huge amount of 3D. We like to keep that 3D happening here and there and periodically. And some people do it in a smaller footprint, so it's more depth type uh, mm -hmm. than it is you know, ex <laughs> extension um, 3D. But one of the things that we have done, and, and this was a piece that um, Arnold did in 2013, we incorporated multimedia. And I, um, we're showing you an image of the painting that Arnold did, but tell us a little bit about that whole project. Um, it was an interesting project you presented me with. Uh, I got the call and because I, well, I knew I was going to be participating in the festival, and then you asked if, because you knew that I did uh, Japanese taiko drumming, if we could incorporate a performance alongside the the street painting. So it it was wow very a little bit stressful at first. Um, <laughs> well, you'd never done it before. And we'd never done. Right. Well, uh, together, yeah, like you splitting, do each one, splitting my time between um, trying to coordinate the art. I l luckily I have really great assistants that helped. Um, Sue Young and uh, Clara Spars helped me out. Actually, Clara, she's a high school student. She did a bulk of the work that I wasn't able to do because we were <laughs> wow. getting ready to perform the the taiko, and um, yeah. I mean. Personally, I thought it was fantastic. We scared and a few people. People loved it. I mean, it was like, <laughs> absolutely loved was it. Was it a circle or on a corner and you could get a big crowd and everybody gathered yeah, we're and kind you of were drawing and then you'd get up and perform and everyone was like clapping. It was, it was very, it was very, very special. special. It made for a dynamic was, uh, performance. Oh I mean, goodness. street painting festival yeah, yeah. because often people just walk around and look at pieces mm -hmm. but this one they have to actually stop and watch something yeah, else all of a sudden <clears throat> you know it's like no more art for a second we're going to do a little bit of performing drumming music <laughs> so oh, yeah. I just lo I love the fact that this whole art form is evolving in different ways mm -hmm. for different events and it, it's just it, you know it's it's fun and it, oh, it's goodness. exciting um, 2014, I don't know if you were there, Shirley, but 2014 was a, a smaller event, but we decided to have a theme, and the theme was California in the 1940s. Um, and all three of these artists were participating, and it, it ranged everything from Hollywood to World War II and, and what was going on at that time. So why don't each of you talk, let's start with Joel, talk a little bit about your piece, what you did, then Sarah, and then Arnold. I often, or I should say I always, in the last maybe <laughs> less than 10 years, I've been doing uh, portraits, and I have been enjoying doing pinups or uh, glamour 30s, 40s, 50s uh, type of thing. And so I picked uh, um, Lucille Ball as one of you know, my feature piece for that year, which is uh, Hollywood and how she was. This was mm -hmm. before I Love Lucy, and people really recognize her. It's a it's slightly younger uh, Lucille Ball, so it's not her goofy makeup, but um, more glamorous. <laughs> um, I, I, was, it's always, I always enjoy doing the, the faces with the big, bright the eyes. Big and, eyes. <laughs> and the big, you know, uh, red lips. <laughs> people like look, looking at faces. I think there's something intrinsically... Uh, uh, magnetizing about you know about faces and, and and I don't want people to think too much when they're coming to the festival. I just want them to pass by, be wowed by it, and then move on, kind of thing. Sure. I know it's rather shallow, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's my entertainment value. <laughs> well, uh, well, mine required a little bit of thinking. <laughs> Not that they needed to figure it out, but um, because it was the 1940s in California. 
Um, and I have an illustration background, so I like to do the research. So I started looking up what was happening in the 1940s and, of course, came across the World's Fair and Treasure Island and all of that exciting stuff in our history. And I read that they invited Diego Rivera to come and participate as a muralist at the World's Fair so people could come and watch him create a mural which is exactly what we do. Mm. We do a festival, not that we're Diego Rivera, but mm. <laughs> we present artwork in action for the public, and, and it's something that you don't get to have that, an experience with on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's engaging, and I thought, well, that's what we do. So I started with the Diego Rivera theme, and then I, I also read that uh, he was already divorced from Frida Kahlo, but he invited her to come to San Francisco, and he then talked her into getting remarried at San Francisco City Hall. So I did a piece that I called Diego y Frida Remarriage. And all of that happened in the city in 1940. And, and mm. I loved I loved it. It was so much fun. I did sort of a caricature of both of them. That's a great story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Arnold did something that just, it's still, is something I can't stop thinking about. Tell us about your piece. Well, once I heard the, the theme for the festival, initially I was thinking, uh, swing dancing. <laughs> <laughs> and then because of um, kind of a, a personal experience uh, that my family had being in, uh, living in California in the 40s, um, they were relocated um, after the bombing of Pearl Harbor mm -hmm. to uh, first to the Central Valley and then to uh, Colorado. So they were in an internment camp. Um, so I shifted a away from the, the swing dancing idea and um, found some of the WRA, the uh, War Relocation um, Authority photos that are really poignant. They were shot by, you know, amazing photographers. Um, Ansel Adams shot and um, I can't remember her name. Dorothea, Dorothea, oh, Dorothea Lang. Yeah. yeah. So really, really famous photographers were taking, documenting what was going on. Um, the actual photo that I used was um, taken by uh, Clem Albers, and um, it was, a, you know, one of a series of, of shots that was taken of a family, and this one shot was their two-year-old daughter sitting on their, all they could bring with them was what they could carry and they were given a week's notice to evacuate. So she's kind of forlorn, so she's sitting on um, her little suitcase, she's got a little purse, she's got a, an apple with a bite taken out of it and she's unsure what's going on because she's only two years old. Yeah. But that was, that was, that that piece, there was not a single soul that did not get teary-eyed mm -hmm. on that one. And yeah, that we have lots, lots of comments like that. That yeah. was a very emotional piece and very well executed, as your work always is. So as you can see, we, we covered the gamut <laughs> on the 1940s. It was really, wow. even though it was a smaller event, it was extremely impactful and one of the most popular events a lot of people have been to because of that and that personal touch that all of you included. Now we have a special um, series of uh, photos that you have uh, hooked up somehow here and we're gonna see them or? Well, there's actually a video when we talk about how mm. we, we have incorporated a variety of different things with uh, street painting and the fine art of street painting. Um, in recent times, uh, or this early this year I should say, not recent times, um, we had the opportunity to uh, work with an amazing filmmaker, and his name is Gary Yost, and he lives in Mill Valley, and we were able to work also with another very talented street painter, Jenna Panzarella, who lives in Mill Valley, and they created a film that just masterfully, to me, illustrates Gary's quote, which is, the synergy of creative collaboration can result in magic beyond imagining. And it's all about Mount Tam 
and what was done to Mount Tam during the war, and how it was used, how they had to bulldoze and excavate the mountain and build the base up there and so on. It's a fascinating film and we're going to share that with everybody now. I felt so lucky to get the opportunity to come up here and do this drawing. Doing these drawings is such a powerful thing for me. This is my second piece on healing, and it's about the mountain, Mount Tamalpais, that is in my backyard, and I'm so grateful for it. To live right at the base of this glorious mountain is a very magical and lucky thing. I mean, I just notice it all the time. It's always different. Every day it's different. Every day it looks different. One of the reasons I wanted to draw this mountain on this particular spot is because I wanted to restore the image of the uh, profile and the, the top line of the mountain to restore this particular peak, which was removed to build a barracks. And they actually took the top off of this part of the mountain. And so I was able to draw it as it was originally. That's a very powerful opportunity for me to get to do that and see it as it was, the west peak of this three Peak Mountain. So right now I am actually inside this mountain. The reason I say that, that I'm now sitting inside the mountain is because this used to be the mountain over my head here, this space that was removed. My drawing and all the efforts around it are part of an offering to this mountain and uh, trying to give back a little something to this mountain that is constantly in my life and in everybody's life who lives around it and the sustaining power of nature is so remarkable when going through something. A uh, walk on this mountain can wipe it pretty clean. So to explain the surface that I'm drawing on is a foundation that was created during the Cold War for the mess hall of an army barracks that was up here. And to me, it feels like, although it's a very convenient surface to draw on, it is uh, still a mess. <laughs> People always ask me, what will you do if it rains when I'm drawing? I tell them it's, it's a spectacular opportunity for me because like many artists, I can get blocked and I challenge myself, is this going to be good enough? And, and is this merit a canvas? And should this last a lifetime? And it, it will, what will they think of me in generations to come and things like that? And the thing about chalk drawing is it's for here and now, it's impermanent and it will be gone. And the rain washes away my sins along with the successes that I have had, but also so many mistakes. And so it's also a wonderful opportunity for me because I have to think fast and I have to grab stuff quickly and I don't have time to intimidate myself. I have to just go with whatever is running through my brain, what is going through my eyes, what is going through my heart, and I put those things together as quickly as possible, and sometimes I'm very happy with what comes out. I've been reminded that even a mountain is impermanent, and certainly this one is, but something so steadfast and uh, reliable as a mountain also eventually gets taken down.
project was planned with the idea that I would do this drawing just before a rain came. So we've been waiting for the rain to be in the forecast so that the rain can wash and unite this painting, this honor I'm trying to give the mountain back into the mountain. So that's a natural element that's going to connect it back as I intended. telephone number or, a, or a, a website of some kind that if people want to find out about being a sponsor or volunteer or anything at your uh, June event this year that they oh, can give absolutely. you a call? Um, we are still accepting sponsorship and they can get a hold of us at um, our, our phone is 415-884-2423 or info at italianstreetpaintingmarin.org. Okay. And so we're always looking for sponsors, we're always looking for volunteers, and um, you know, that we're always looking for help, period. <laughs> <laughs> because we have a very, very minimal staff and we're a volunteer-based organization for the most part. Well, this has been very exciting and, and very educational, <laughs> and I would like to thank the Italian street painting uh, uh, group here. Uh, and Sue Carla Magno, founder of the group, and uh, Sarah Mordecai here from the visual and icon designer and illustrator who has shared so much with us, Arnold Shimizu, who sure. is an illustrator and graphic designer, and, and Joel Yao, who uh, is a still life and landscape painter and sculptor. And we've heard so, so many wonderful things from all of you. It's just been so exciting. And we want to be sure that we say a couple more details about when you can next see all the excitement of an Italian street painting festival and Sue Carla Magno will tell us exactly when. Well, Carnival de Venezia will take place uh, June 27th and 28th on Saturday from 10 to 8 and Sunday from 10 to 6. It's on 5th Avenue and 8th Street. There's three entrances um, so it's easy to get into. The tickets are $5 for Saturday, $10 for Sunday. And they're also available online at brownpapertickets.com. If you have any questions, just email us at info at italianstreetpaintingmarin.org or give us a call at 415-884-2423. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you, all of you. And we'll thank all you, look Shirley. forward to the festival. Thank you. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.